Let's conclude our discussion of acid-base disorders by discussing renal tubular acidosis. There are three types to remember for the USMLE Step 1, types 1, 2, and 4. Type 3 is rarely used as a classification because it is thought to be a combination of types 1 and 2. Renal tubular acidosis type 1, also known as distal renal tubular acidosis, is due to an inability of the distal tubule to secrete and excrete fixed acid. The etiology involves impairment of the transport systems for hydrogen ions and bicarbonate and an increased permeability of the apical membrane which allows the back diffusion of hydrogen ions from the tubular lumen. It can occur sporadically, be secondary to autoimmune diseases such as lupus, or due to drugs such as amphotericin or lithium. The clinical result is a metabolic acidosis with an inappropriately high urine pH along with secondary hyperaldosteronism associated with hypokalemia. In states of chronic acidemia, the normal physiological buffer systems are exhausted and basic calcium salts are mobilized from bone to act as buffers. The resultant hypercalcemia, along with the fact that metabolic acidosis suppresses proximal and distal calcium reabsorption by decreasing apical calcium entry, leads to hypercalciuria and nephrocalcinosis. This, coupled with the reduction in urinary citrate levels that occurs during metabolic acidosis, as well as a persistently alkaline urine, predisposes towards kidney stone development. Now let's discuss renal tubular acidosis type 2, also known as proximal renal tubular acidosis. It is due to a diminished capacity of the proximal tubule to reabsorb bicarbonate. This condition is characterized by low plasma bicarbonate levels and low urine pH levels. Isolated defects in proximal tubule bicarbonate reabsorption are rare, as most patients have multiple defects in proximal tubular function, including defective reabsorption of glucose, calcium, phosphate, citrate, uric acid, lysozymes, and amino acids. Patients, therefore, may also present with symptoms attributable to deficiencies of these other molecules, such as hypophosphatemic rickets. Conditions associated with RTA type 2 include Fanconi syndrome, which involves a general defect in the proximal tubular transport processes, Wilson's disease, amyloidosis, myeloma, vitamin D deficiency, secondary hypoparathyroidism, chronic hepatitis, and autoimmune diseases such as lupus. RTA type 2 may also occur following carbonic anhydrase inhibitor use. Lastly, in renal tubular acidosis type 4, also known as hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis, the abnormality is due to hypoaldosteronism or a lack of the collecting tubule's response to aldosterone. It is associated with a mild metabolic acidosis due to a physiologic reduction in proximal tubular ammoniogenesis and excretion, which is secondary to the hypoaldosteronism. This results in a decrease in urine buffering capacity. It can also be caused by other conditions that disrupt distal tubular electrolyte transport, such as drugs like spironolactone, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, trimethoprim, and pentamidine. Further, it may be due to diseases that alter kidney structure and function, such as diabetic nephropathy, HIV and AIDS, lupus, and adrenal diseases. It is important to keep in mind for the USMLE, however, that type 4 renal tubular acidosis is distinguishable from types 1 and 2 in that it results in hyperkalemia. Patients, therefore, can present with a metabolic acidosis, asymptomatic hyperkalemia, and their urinary lab studies show a decreased urine pH. Excellent work! This concludes our look at renal physiology and the renal tubular acidoses. For our next lecture, we'll spend time looking at renal pathology.